All right, so I have my boy Trey here with me, and we're gonna talk about our senior year experience, graduating college, applying for jobs, full-time jobs that is, um, how we prep for our interviews, how we feel about post-graduation, how we feel about you know, how we feel about working in the corporate America lifestyle. So, Trey, what was it like for you? when you were trying to look for a job senior year um <laughs> stressful i yes. think uh, yeah <laughs> i think for me like i don't know like you put a lot of work into college you put a lot of time into it a lot of effort and so it's just like and a lot of money so like you for me it was like all right based on all the time that i put in like what can i do to make it worth it you know so like there was like a certain uh, like a certain amount of pay that I would not go under like certain circumstances that I just like would not uh, like accept because for me it was like alright like I put in all this time I put in my four to five years like I put in all this money like I have to get a certain thing out of it you know right, right. so I think for me it was just like I don't know like I, I, I was picky so like I probably interviewed a little bit less than I should have because I wanted to make sure that I got like I wanted to make sure, like, you know, you get a lot of, like, random emails, I mean, right, messages right. on, like, LinkedIn or something. Right. And like, exactly. hey, like, come through. And you're like, uh, yeah. like. You deserve better. Like, you deserve what yeah, you want. So. Exactly. So, like, I was definitely, like, a lot pickier in that in that realm. So That's, I mean, I understand that because I did six years. And that's just because I transferred. I changed majors first in my first school. Mm -hmm. Then I transferred, which once you transfer, not all the time, you're not always lucky where all your credits transfer. Right, yeah. And then I added on a minor. So that's basi that basically just extended my timeline in school, which is the normal, maybe three and a half to four and a half years. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, my experience would be, like you said, you're picky. I, I was picky too. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I had to go for the, the best at least mm -hmm. at least a certain amount of money I, I wasn't going to go below a certain amount because i know from from even just because of my background where i have people that work for big companies or just get big salaries in general i'm like okay well i need to get on that level or better yeah so absolutely. it's it's honestly just if you're motivated that's 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 the top thing that's going to help you when you're trying to find a job but I totally understand because trying to balance classes, trying to apply for jobs at the same time, trying to go to your part-time job, mm -hmm. also trying to pass class, um, pass your exams, or if you if you're doing um, hobbies or whatever, like going to the gym mm -hmm. or going to another thing, you're trying to get yourself into like clothes now, or whatever, yeah, yeah like clothing lines or like. anything like that. So, what companies did you interview for? Uh, well, interview with, sorry. There was a couple, so because of my internship with Geico, I had a lot of like insurance companies that I interviewed for, like Geico and stuff like that. Also like a couple like scammy, I don't want to like say a specific name, but like bigger but like scammier uh, life insurance companies hit me up. <laughs> so like I, I played with them a little bit just to see you know they're like oh if you get this many sales and this many people you can make this much money and like you know if you're dumb then that, right. that shit sounds great right. yeah, but yeah, yeah. for me i was like oh, that doesn't sound right <laughs> yeah right i'm like that's i don't think so um so i'd say i don't know like most of them were insurance firms um i'd say like the biggest one was probably cisco cisco um and then of course this one too uh, but yeah, like I was I was really picky and I wanted to stick to something I knew or was interested in So like even with Geico like I, I bounced I, I worked off of that and Applied to like a lot of either insurance or like sales positions mm -hmm. um, Like there was this position for a window company up in DC um, That I was interested in and it was a company that I had been working with at the time um, So it was just you know not a lot like right. I, I didn't like bounce around too much and I think this is something that I try to tell people all the time because like I think the Cisco thing opened my eyes like I try to tell people like yeah, for me I I thought like oh like 
I'm never gonna be with a big company. Like I'm never gonna be with Google or something like that. Like I'm just coming out of this random school. I'm a random yeah. dude. Like what what can I get type of thing? Like I had high standards, but I didn't have like Google standards or right. something like that, yeah. you know? So or Cisco standards for that matter. Um, so like once I went through the Cisco process and didn't get it the first time, they called me back like, yo, like we want you to come back, come through, blah, blah, blah. That's when I was like, oh, like maybe yeah. I can do this. So for me, like I, I just always recommend to people, you know, like whether you think you're capable of reaching that level or not, like at least try, try. jump exactly. in, do something. Cause I mean, like they want all these different people. Like if you are capable, if you're confident enough to think that like you're a good employee or person or whatever, like at least try. You exactly. Know, like, I, you can. I get that. And how was your, how was your intern? You, you interned at Geico, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How was your internship there? Um, it was interesting. <laughs> it was not bad. Like it was not bad at all. Right. It was super fun. Um, but the work wasn't, I don't want to say the work wasn't for me. I think it was honestly more of the environment. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the work was very simple. It, it would have been a management role that I was going into if I had taken the opportunity. But I think that, um, for me, it just like the, the work seemed, uh, I don't, it seemed boring, honestly. Like, I'm gonna just be transparent. It just seemed very boring. Like, right. it didn't seem super engaging. Like, I didn't think that I was gonna learn a lot. Like, where I am now, like, every day is a test. And it's like, all right, can you step up to the plate, right. you know? Right. And so, just there, like, I just felt like if I went there, I was just gonna go downhill, you know? Like, like, like mentally, I was gonna be like, I can't do this. Like, I'm just gonna be drained because it's just not what I'm interested in, not what I love. Um, the environment, I wasn't a big fan of either because it's just, it's not necessarily a bad place, but sometimes a place just isn't for you, you know? Yeah. So, like, that's, I, that, that kind of turned me off a little bit, just certain interactions. I love the people there, I loved all the friends I made. You know, I enjoyed it overall. Like, I don't have anything necessarily bad to say, just that it's not for me personally. Yeah. Um. So, like, it's it's not one of those things where, like, I get on camera like, don't work there. It's one of those things where it's like, no, like, you might love it. It just, like, didn't really vibe with how I do things. So, uh, yeah, I mean, everybody has their own, their own way. So, mm -hmm. I mean, now I had two internships. One was with Centera Healthcare. And I was a, uh, I was basically in the cybersecurity department. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very in depth. It's also a money maker. Um, I mean, it 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 gives you a leverage on a lot of places because I've had a lot of companies hit me up just because of my secu cybersecurity background. Right. Yeah. And my minor in it also. And then my second internship was with Huntington Ingalls Industries, which is um, Newport News Shipbuilding. And to be honest. I, like you, I hated their environment. Not to knock it, Newport News Shipbuilding, they pay their interns and co-op some really good money. <laughs> like, you're like, if you're right. in college, <laughs> I advise you to go apply for them, and mm -hmm. they also do. Um, they also bring in interns from other states. What, what about your interview preparations? Um, so, I mean, <laughs> it seems small, but for me, like, the way that you look is really important. Like when I like, so for me, if I'm going into an interview, like I'm looking my best, like, you know, like simple Shoot as that. Up. Yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going in <laughs> flexing, you know? But if I go in and the person I'm interviewing with does not like reciprocate that, like they're like, they're, their shirt isn't fully tucked in and like their jacket's too big and baggy or dirty or something like that's what turned off for me. I'm like, all right, like, this is how they allow you to carry yourself and like i don't you know right, right so like that definitely affects my perception so like it seems small but for me like the way that you carry yourself like body language wise and also the clothes you wear etc cetera, etc cetera, all of that stuff matters a lot so i was like very big on you know like making sure like you're kept up like physically and everything in terms of actual preparation like mentally um so like a lot of like even for our company or you know like cisco or something like that uh when they have like these very intensive programs the best way is just like getting the material that they provide to you and just like studying the hell out of it normally you have like two weeks so i think you know even for cisco they 
gave us, uh, they wanted us to like do a presentation. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, uh, I think they give you like ample time for that, but then they have like a specific case study or something and they give you like advice towards it and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and so all of that stuff, I think you have like two weeks to study and do. Right. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's normally like, it's like very high octane. Like it's right. not like one of those things where like you can really just like chill and like study and like you have time, like the way that you would like a test or a class or something. Right. It's like, they'll call you and be like, Hey, you moved on to the next round. This is the information that you need. We just sent the email. We'll see you in two weeks in whatever state that we're flying you out to. And it's like, that's it. Like you don't, <laughs> you know, like you don't get a lot of preparation, a lot of time. Um, so I think the main thing is just like being flexible, being malleable, staying sharp and right. like knowing your basics, like knowing basic formulas or like anything that you need for whatever field that you're in, like make sure you know this stuff cause you're going to have to apply it once you go into that, at, like go into the interview room. So. Right. For mine, like it was pretty different because, all right, so I'm going to give you right now who I interviewed for. I interviewed for... Cisco twice. Once was an internship back in 2015, I believe, or 14, and then one was for also what you went for. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it as far as you, mm -hmm. but um, second one was Microsoft. I interviewed with them three times. Uh, I interviewed with Facebook. I interviewed with Google. Dude. I interviewed with See, all these big companies. <laughs> I right. interviewed with Dell, SAP. Um, oh yeah, Cap Gemini, um, Ernst and Young, which is EY as people know it. Um, who else did I interview for? I interviewed with a smaller company called Appian. Um, interviewed with I can't really remember all the smaller companies, but those are like the basically the bigger companies I interviewed with. Mm -hmm. And for mine was really just my number one thing is always to go on LinkedIn and try and find somebody who works in that position or within the company who can like refer you to somebody who works in that position you're interviewing for. Let's say you're interviewing for a program manager role. Reach out to somebody on Facebook, um, on LinkedIn. If they're a program manager, you type in program manager Facebook or whatever company. And basically they pop up, you connect with them and you just basically ask them how they got into the company, what what tips and preparation ideas do they have for you to get in the company? My second thing is to go to my my network around me. People mm -hmm. who, I can, who I can text right then and there. I reach out to everybody just to try and prepare for my interviews. Also, I also Google interview tips and stuff. Reddit yeah, yeah. is a big thing. Yeah. He oh, got me on Reddit. So <laughs> yeah. Reddit is a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, even just uh, um, sites like Jumpstart. You can get up there and create a forum and ask people have they interviewed with these companies before, how did they prepare? And then from there it's just honestly, a lot of companies it, it could be finesse. If you can talk if you can market your way around questions, you're you're pretty much set to go. Yeah. <laughs> like if you can market yourself then you're good. Yeah, that's half the battle for real. And then yeah. like also the case study, like, exactly. like there's like there's two halves. Like if you're personable and likable, like you're you're already winning and then like if you can just do whatever like simple tasks they ask you to do because normally it's not anything that's super crazy you're never going to be fully prepared for whatever you're going to right after college simple as that um but as long as you're like you have like the base like knowledge you're you're good they're not going to give you anything that's right. all that complex right and so for the as like he said the case study my first case study was with cap gemini i interviewed with them twice matter of fact the second company I interviewed for, which is Company X, I already told you guys, I'm not going to name the company, no issues. Um, I happened to do good on the case interview, I guess, I'm, I'm, with, <laughs> I'm with them, so I guess I did something right. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> um, and the case study is, is pretty, the case study is really just sales. Mm -hmm. Don't just have hard skills, you need to have soft skills. Mm -hmm. Soft skills is a big thing too. and. 
don't sell yourself short. Like he said, don't aim for the lowest company. You get a taste for it, and you're like, oh yeah, like I like this. Because I mean, it's like smaller companies, they have a smaller budget, and there's only so much they can provide to you. There's nothing wrong with being at a small company. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah. like it's it's like you you can still have a great experience, but it's also one of those things where you've got to think like this company is big for a reason. And exactly. so, you know, you look at, uh, you know, some of the best companies to work for and it's like, why are they some of the best companies to work for? You're not going to get some super small, like, you know, locally based company on that list for specific reasons. They just don't have the resources to take care of their people in the same fashion or to the same capacity that, you know, uh, a company. company yeah. yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I just, I mean, it's not bad to work for a smaller company, but when you're getting out of college and you don't know exactly where to go or who to apply for, apply to those Facebooks and Googles and, you know, exactly. Apples and stuff. Like, it cannot just hurt do it. at all. Just do it. Yeah, like, the worst thing can say is no, and then, like, you're still applying to other places. Like, that's just how it always works, you know what yep. I'm saying? Definitely go to conferences, too. Mm. Nesby, mm -hmm. that was a big one. I had three interviews there alone, and got right. one. I got one offer from there. So... That's a big one. Definitely try to apply to anything because now we work for the same company, Company X. And Company X is one of the top six consulting companies in the world. Not just in America, not nationally, in the world. So we came up. <laughs> we came up. How was, how, how did you feel when you got your first, you got the offer from a big company along with the salary. How did you feel? <laughs> it's like, it's like a weight off your shoulders, man. Like, it's like, first of all, it's one of those things where you're like, all right, like, I did it. Like, I can do it and I did it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, automatically, like, it's a confidence booster right. and stuff like that. But also, it's just like, all right, cool. Like, I am in a position where I don't have to worry as much. I don't have to think about X, Y, and Z. Um, it's just, it's just such a like relief, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like that was the biggest thing for me because like struggling through college, working two, three jobs, et cetera, et cetera, like exhausted. Like I always took max credits. I had the double major, like I was going bro. So then like, like I said, I wanted to make it all worth it. Right, right. And so like when I got like any of the offers that I got, like just getting that first one, I'm like, damn, like, that's crazy. Like we made it. Like we right, made right. it. You know. Yeah. Um. So like that was really big for me. Um. It's just. I think it's just like. It, it's just about like, like knowing like it was it was worth it. Like right, that's right. that's that's all it is for me. And like I keep saying it, but like for me, it's just like, I just gotta make sure that it wasn't all oh, like I didn't do all of this just to get out of school work like a dead-end job where I'm miserable exactly. making 40k it's and I'm just like man like 40k <sighs> long that matches your school loans yeah right <laughs> exactly like when my like my loans are 33 and it's like if I'm making 40k like that's just not getting paid off no time soon like right dog you did, <laughs> like, you did good because <laughs> I'm at 46 <laughs> like whew. Honestly, I can't imagine. And I mean, with my 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 offers, I got my first offer was in Colorado, in Denver. I don't even like the cold weather, so <laughs> I was just happy. Out the thing is, I was like, "Fuck it!" I got my first <laughs> offer. Yeah. I was like, "Man, it's a good company." Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to do this. They have other offices, different places. I'm I'm gonna try and stay there and then relocate. Mm -hmm. But then the salary was like, uh, yeah. I'm not gonna do better than this. Mm -hmm. It wasn't bad, but I can do better than this. Second company I got an offer. It was higher than theirs, but still not where I wanted it to be. Right. Third company, it was just below the first two, so I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. Fourth company. Great location, but it just wasn't high enough. That's just that's not me being cocky or whatever, mm -hmm. or the right word to use. I don't know what, what's the word to use for it, but it's just more of I know what I deserve. Yeah, like you know your worth. Yeah, and that's that's an important part too. Like, exactly. I think that like 
at the end of the day, like you put all this time and effort into school, all this money, you did so much, like you know what you're worth. Like at the end of the day, like if you graduate and your mentality was C's get degrees, I'm gonna be all right. Then it's like, you're obviously not yeah. the type of person that's trying to work for Facebooks and Googles and stuff. And you could still get there. Like, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying like the mentality, like the way that you move on a daily basis has to reflect how you want to be, where you want to be in the future. Exactly. So, I mean, it's like if you, if you are one of those people that is okay with a subpar, can, like, get, like being in a subpar condition or like working at a subpar level, then like more than likely you will receive a sub par job like you that's just that's right. just how it's gonna go right. but if you're one of those people that's going hard doing what you need to do like this man was in school for six years like he grinded for it he worked his butt off he got what he he did what he needed to do and so it worked out so i mean it's like uh, and, and and again like grades aren't everything you know like when i was in school i did a lot of club stuff like i didn't have a 4-0 yep. but like yeah. i just i did a lot of club yeah. stuff like i i uh helped start an uh, organization at my school and like we created a scholarship stuff like that like be active like just just show that like you are performing at a certain level and you know companies will see that and then when you come in and you're like this is what i've done and like they see you firsthand and they're like oh like this is who i'm dealing with like it, it speaks for itself you know so i mean i think that like it's not about being cocky but it's like if you work your butt off and like you were an a student then like and and like not just an a student in terms of grades but just in terms of performance in college in general like everything that you did and you just went hard with it then it's like that then you should have a certain expectation nobody goes to harvard gets straight a's and then is okay with making forty thousand right. dollars a year like that's right. not what they work for that's not what they did this for you know so i mean i think that that's important it's not about being cocky and so when you are in when you're when you're in the job market like know your worth like don't settle like i my first job offer since like that's going back to what we were actually talking about right my first job offer from geico it was only 42k wow yeah and i was like well it's a guaranteed job with a great company but like how long will it take you to get where you want to be yeah exactly so i mean for me i'm just like all right like it's cool but like 42 like that's not that that's not what i feel i'm worth so for me it's like that's great for other people that's fine and i'm not putting anybody down but like i know the the blood sweat and tears that i put into this school is not 42k right you know right. Like, as simple as that right so like i just i nah. a big thing another big thing too that i forgot to mention networking networking can get you into places where you honestly would not think you'd be able to get to. Along with the networking with the workforce, I have family who's in the workforce, I have friends who's in the workforce, and I can basically get information that I need that I can't get on my own mm -hmm. from them, from their help. Mind you, we both came, we went to the same school, went to, we had two or three classes together, and I all like he basically knows that I I like helping people. My biggest thing is there's a lot of money to be made in this country. Don't be stingy. Don't try and hide the ways of making money. Help others because once you once for me it's once I come up you come up. Yeah. If I can help you I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. So but from there let's let's move on to how is it being in corporate America? Mm, how is it so i will say i'm gonna go to that i'm gonna answer that question i will say so like for me personally like the networking thing is big because just like you said we had a couple classes together you know we helped each other out in in classes that even maybe we didn't take at the same time stuff like that like right. anytime i needed information like he always had me like we always stayed connected even though we weren't like hanging out every day and stuff like that you know it's just having those connections and so like the job that we currently have i would not have without him like he's the one who hit me up and he's like yo like i know you've been grinding doing your thing like talk to this person i talked to this person they get back to me two weeks later i've already forgotten about the situation <laughs> they get back to me two weeks later call me on the phone like oh yeah like blah 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 blah. like let me fly you out and then from there like here we both are you know what i'm saying exactly. so, same school same company yeah like that's crazy so i mean it's just like make sure you keep those connections and when you find people that you feel are worth it like 
stay in contact with them like even over this past summer after I already had my job like I was still connected with a couple people and I'm just like yo if you never ever need anything I'm finally in a position where I can help you out in certain ways like not throwing you money but nece necessarily but just like you know like if you ever need a connection if you ever need this if you ever need that blah 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 um so I mean it's like always build those connections always like hold it down and just um Make sure that like when you receive a blessing, you try to give it out. That's exactly. that's that's like the mentality that I always have. I always pay it forward. Like he helped me, and so yeah, I just try to like make sure that I keep divvying out what I can. Um, but on to the actual question. Uh, the question was how is the how is corporate America? How is the workplace? Um, it's hectic. Being in consulting is like like there's no specific workplace because it's always changing. There's tons of different people or like personalities in the workplace. And I mean, they say it all the time, like, you know, like knowing how to deal with people. But like actually like knowing how to deal with people is vital. You know, there's right. going to be people that annoy you, piss you off or fun, blah, blah, blah. And it's yeah. like. You yeah. gotta know how to balance all that, man. Like, it's not always fun, but, I mean, it pays the bills. Stay dedicated to what you want to do. That's mm -hmm. the big thing. Yeah. Stay dedicated. But we are definitely going to do another vlog together, and the next vlog should be a gym vlog. Mm, so yes, absolutely. definitely going to the gym. I hate like that. I do. I like back. Oh, I like back. deadlifts. He likes deadlifts. I love deadlifts, yeah. I fucking hate deadlifts. <laughs> <laughs> My back kills me <laughs> thank you for watching remember mm -hmm. to subscribe yes. share like comment and come back for the next video yes thank you